Hi, I'm Joe Alden-MD, also known as Dr. Bones of doomandbloom.net, where you'll find close to 700 articles, videos, and podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster. Together with my wife, Amy Alden, a nurse practitioner, we're the co-authors of the three category and number one Amazon bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook, a guide for when medical help is not on the way. Uh, also, the New York Times bestseller, The Ebola Survival Handbook, and even the designers of a board game, Doom and Bloom Survival, a great way to get the whole gang to put down those smartphones and have a fun and challenging family game night. This is part two of our video series on heat-related emergencies. In part one, we discuss statistics on medical effects of hot weather, risk factors for overheating, the heat index, and municipal advisories regarding extreme hot weather. The ill effects due to overheating are called heat exhaustion if they're mild to moderate, and if severe, these effects are referred to as heat stroke. This is a continuous process in which symptoms start piling one upon another. Heat exhaustion usually does not result in permanent damage if treated, but heat stroke can. Indeed, it can permanently disable or even kill its victim. It's a medical emergency that must be diagnosed and treated promptly to avoid long-term effects. To make the diagnosis of heat exhaustion, a significant rise in the body's core temperature is required. As many heat-related symptoms may mimic other conditions, a thermometer of some sort should be a component of your medical supplies. Think about that. Now, in addition to muscle cramps, dizziness, and fainting, heat exhaustion may be characterized by profuse sweating, flushing, rapid pulse, weakness, confusion, muscle cramps, headache, nausea, and even vomiting, perhaps, fainting, as I mentioned before, and temperature elevation up to about 105 degrees Fahrenheit. The victim may exhibit some or all of these signs and symptoms. Now, cooling and rehydration are basic strategies to treat heat exhaustion. Move the patient to a cooler environment, such as inside a home or a car with air conditioning. Cars have air conditioning. Or into a shady spot if those are not available. Remove their clothes to help with evaporation and spray them with cool water if it's available. Now, small sips of water or a sports drink will be important to improve hydration status even if the person is nauseous. Without fluids, the victim will only become more dehydrated and require intravenous therapy. Acetaminophen, ibuprofen, they may help to decrease discomfort from muscle cramps. That is another option for you. If no action is taken to cool the patient, heat stroke may ensue. Heat stroke, in addition to the symptoms that I just mentioned, may manifest as loss of consciousness, delirium, seizures, or even bleeding seen in the urine or vomit. Breathing becomes rapid and shallow. The body core temperature may rise to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the skin is likely to be hot to the touch, but dry. Sweating might be absent. The body uses sweating to cool itself until it hits a temperature of about 106 degrees. At that point, thermoregulation breaks down, and the body's ability to sweat as a natural temperature regulator fails. That's one of the differences between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Now, if not dealt with quickly, shock and organ malfunction may ensue, leading to permanent damage or even death. When overheated patients are no longer able to cool themselves, it's up to their rescuers to do the job. If hyperthermia is expected, the victim should immediately be removed from the heat source. Get them out of the sun, for goodness sake. Have their clothing removed. Be drenched with cool water or ice if available. Have their legs elevated above the level of their heart. That is referred to as the shock position. Be fanned or otherwise ventilated to help with heat evaporation. Have moist cold compresses placed in the neck, armpit, and groin areas. Now why the neck, armpit, and groin? Major blood vessels pass close to the skin in these areas and you'll more efficiently cool the body core. In the wilderness, immersion into a cold stream may be all you have in terms of a cooling strategy and this is a worthwhile option as long as you are closely monitoring your patient. Now, should you give oral fluids to a person who has experienced heat stroke? The answer is no if they have altered mental status. They could possibly have the fluids go down the wrong pipe and enter the lungs. This is called aspiration and could easily become life-threatening. The good news is that heat-related illness is largely preventable with a little bit of planning. 
Wear clothing appropriate for the weather. Loose, lightweight, light-colored clothing, that will allow ventilation and it won't absorb heat. Tightly swaddling an infant with blankets simply because that's what's done with a baby is a recipe for disaster in hot weather. Now have everyone wear a head covering to protect against the sun. A bandana soaked in water, for example, would be an effective protection strategy in hot weather. Much of the sweating we do comes from our face and head, so towel off frequently to aid in heat evaporation. Now if you can avoid dehydration, you'll likely avoid heat exhaustion or heat stroke. Work or exercise in hot weather, especially by someone in poor physical condition, will easily cause a person to lose body water content. Filling up before doing work in hot weather will help stave off dehydration. Drink a pint of fluid, a sports drink, maybe with electrolytes, that might be better even, and do that once an hour during work sessions, 16 to 24 ounces of water per hour. Speaking of work sessions, avoid scheduling these in the hotter parts of the day. Pay attention to heat advisories put out by your municipality and be sure to provide sunscreen, SP30 or greater, to your workers so that you can avoid burns. Carefully planning your outdoor work in the summer heat and keeping up with fluids will be a major step in keeping healthy and avoiding heat-related illness. Monitor the workload and the workers and you'll stay out of trouble. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, make sure to check out Nurse Amy's entire line of medical supplies at store.doomandbloom.net.